Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. My name is Frank, and this is a build review. This is the Buster Sword, probably one of the more recognizable weapons in video game history. Honestly, I don't think I've ever really showed this to anybody who wasn't like, oh wow, what's that from? Between Final Fantasy, Kingdom Hearts, Super Smash Brothers, and just, this is a pretty recognizable weapon. And ever since I was a kid, I've wanted one. I've, like, look at this thing. To be a little more specific, this is actually Zack Fair's Buster Sword from uh, Final Fantasy Crisis Core. It had a little bit of a flashback scene in Advent Children, and you can actually, if you've seen Advent Children, you can see this is the sword Cloud walks up upon. Um, I believe it's at Zack's grave. It's rusty, and then it appears at the church at the end of the movie. Why this model? Meh, why not? I, I like the handle a little bit more, so I decided to go with this version, because the model I got from it gave me basically every version you could probably ever want to print. Whereas Cloud's Buster Sword has a little bit more of a specific handle with some nice little uh, metal rivets going around the side, and the hilt is actually wider than the blade itself. Zax is a little more streamlined, a little more ornate. This isn't actually quite done yet. There's still a little bit more I want to do to it. I have to finish up the handle to make it look a little more weathered. There's a couple little more details I need to do, and I actually do want to get some red leather for the handle. Now, one of the things you guys might be wondering watching this right away, well, that looks kind of cool, but can you hold it? Yes, I can. That was actually one of the design features I wanted to focus on when I was actually building this thing. What's the point of a buster sword if you can't actually pick it up and hold it? It's still very awkward, it's still very heavy, it wants to tip and balance forward, but you can definitely hold it out. I wanted to make sure the handle could actually support this, and we'll talk about this in the design features that the model had chosen and what I was actually able to take advantage of and capitalize on to give this thing a little bit more strength. This STL file is from CG Trader from a modeler named 3 Dutchy, like 3D, but the D is Dutchy. Go find them, there's a link below. And it was actually really cool the way he had packaged and modeled this entire sword. He gives you the options to do the Crisis Core version, Zack Fares, and he also gives you the option to do Cloud Strife Sword from the Final Fantasy VII Remake. So he gives you both handle options and hilt options. He gives you a couple different handle options to work with and, you know, that dress up whichever way you want. But I think the coolest design feature is how he actually ends up cutting the STL file apart to be able to be printed on almost any printer. Now, I obviously have some pretty big printers. I was able to print this in about seven pieces, literally just cut right along the blade. I ended up cutting the handle off just for a little bit of ease of building, and then I cut the hilt into a separate piece, and we'll look at that in a minute. But this file also comes with some other decorations, Cloud's uh, shoulder armor, his bracelets, and as you see, I don't have any materia in the slots yet. I'm still working out exactly what I want to put in there, what colors I want to do, and if I want to light them up with LEDs, because that'd be kind of cool. Believe it or not, this was actually printed at 90% scale. This sword is supposed to be about seven feet tall. If you follow any of the Final Fantasy games and you've done any research on the Buster Sword, you know that this has to be one of the most inconsistently sized weapons out there. There are some reference images from the original Final Fantasy that has the sword at only maybe four or five feet long. There are some other clips and shots that make this thing look like it's eight feet long. And between Kingdom Hearts and Super Smash Brothers, and I think he's even in Dissidia, there is just so much inconsistency on this weapon. But everybody can come into the agreement that it is obnoxiously big, and it doesn't make any sense. So when I was getting ready to scale and print this, I kind of had to make a, make a choice. How big do I want this thing to actually be? And after doing the measurements, the STL files for this thing are seven feet tall. Now, I'm five foot eight. I'm not the tallest person in the world, but having a seven foot sword stand next to me probably wouldn't help me at any. So I actually decided to make this at 90% scale. So this is six and a half feet tall, which I think works out pretty good. I'm happy with it. I can hold it. And if I ever wanted to make some type of mounting system where I have it on my back and rock this to a Comic-Con or something, it's actually not that overbearing. And again, I can still lift it up just fine. At the end of the day, you can print this thing as big as you want. It's really totally up to you, the amount of space you have, where you're going to hang it, what you're going to do with it. This is the scale and size I went with, and I'm very happy with it. It's, it's overpowering, it's overbearing, and it's just a big-ass sword. To give you some context, while printing this, there was one part I actually printed out at 100% because I'm an idiot and I forgot to scale it, but this is kind of what some of the sections come out like when you print it at its max capabilities. And this was supposed to be sitting right about here, and you can actually see just how much of the blade still comes out even at the 90% scale. So there's still a good amount of size there, and maybe one day I'll print it at 100%. This was printed in 100% Sunlu PLA Plus. I believe most of the blade was printed in gray, 
The tip down there was printed in red and the, the handle and the hilt were printed in um, red as well. It looks pretty cool just sitting there in this picture, sitting on my floor, mostly done. Now, like I said, you have a couple options when printing this. I was able to print the entire handle length in one shot, but that's easily cut up in a program like Slicer or Mesh Mixer. I actually made a plain cut right about here because this whole section of the blade was one whole part cut right about here. But I wanted to make sure my printer was able to give me the best amount of quality, so I actually made a slight cut here and that actually went into the design feature of it. The model actually did something cool. It actually separates the silver and the black parts of the blade so you can print them on smaller printers where you would actually print this entire black section in cut up spots as well and then print the silver part in cut up slots as well and then fuse it all together. He actually ran five channels all the way through the blade for structure and reinforcement. And that's a little bit of a decision you kind of need to make however you're going to fuse it, are you going to glue it, are you going to weld it. The only reinforcing structure I actually have in this blade is I have an eight millimeter threaded rod all the way through the handle and you can actually see it right here in the materia slots coming to about here. That's it. Now if you see my PLA welding tutorial, you know that it can actually structure and make parts pretty damn strong and that's all I did for this. I fused the parts together with the same welding technique I do with my soldering iron and as you can see, it holds together pretty well. Getting this to be nice and straight was probably one of the hardest things I've done, but it was very much worth the time and the finished product. But why did I cut the handle off? Well, aside from having a better opportunity to paint it gold, it unscrews. Now, I move around a lot and I never wanna to have to risk this thing breaking. So what I did is the threaded rod, I can actually unscrew this entire thing and instead of being a six and a half foot sword, it's a five foot blade and you know a handle that I can help transport and move around. And actually this way it fits in my car if I ever want to go to a Comic Con. So it's just an ease of maintenance thing. And if I continue to unscrew this, the whole rod will come out. But you can actually see those alignment holes I was telling you about. And these channels travel all the way through the blade. Now, if you didn't want to design it like this or print it like this, you'd have to fuse it together with those rods already inside. But because the way I printed it, I was able to actually just put this metal rod through it and then I can screw it back down. But because of this, the whole screw rod feature, I can't actually put any reinforcement dowels in here that would fuse the blade to the handle. But I could reinforce all the way down there, but the way I fused and welded it, I don't need to. Some of you have probably already noticed that this side of the blade isn't finished yet. I'm still deciding on kind of what the, sil the silver gun metal I want to use for the actual blade. If you've ever seen any of the uh, Buster Sword pictures, it's actually not some super shiny, glossed, polished, reflected blade. It actually has just a little bit more of an aluminum look because all in all, this is a big ass hunk of steel that Cloud or Zach have just sharpened. And even in some pictures or reference photos, this almost looks like a textured iron ore kind of blade. This, this the black part isn't even polished and shiny. After I fused this whole thing together and had it nice and structurally sound, I started priming the absolute crap out of it. Now, this still isn't filler primer, something this smooth and flat, I didn't feel like it was a, a smart move to just dump filler primer on it, but I was able to use my handy trick with the electric palm sander. This thing saved my life. This made this project so much easier, being able to just take this and smooth down the entire blade. I don't know if I could have done this by hand, it would have been an absolute nightmare. So a dual orbital electric palm sander, this was about $20, it's a little black and decker, and you can actually see some dust falling out the bottom, because I don't really clean it too often, but this thing's been an absolute workhorse. And I sanded it down with about, I wanna say 80 grit, and then hand smoothed it over with a 200 grit, primed it, and went to town. The colors I ended up using for this are actually pretty similar to the Stormbreaker I just made. The blade for this was a Rust-Oleum metallic aluminum, which actually looks pretty close to the reference photos I found. The black part of the blade actually isn't black. It's a it's a Krylon oil rubbed bronze, and I love this color. I used it for parts of Stormbreaker. I've used it on some of my other projects. It looks black until you hit it with just the right angle, and it actually looks more of a metallic. And then finally, the gold is the atypical gold I use for basically everything, Rust-Oleum metallic gold. Now, this can't take a clear coat and if you handle it too much it will start to lose some of its shine but since the handle is going to be wrapped and I'm not going to be really touching the hilt I'm okay using this. I love this thing. I have wanted a full-size buster sword since I was a kid. I actually had a little metal replica that was probably I think 44 45 inches tall. It was actually way heavier than this thing. Last time I weighed this it's, it comes in at about eight pounds, but just the way it's distributed, it gives you a little bit of a you know lever effect, so it wants to tip over. But when I'm actually holding it, and I can't actually hold this in the room without hitting my roof, when I actually hold it like this, seven, eight pounds roughly, and it's actually not that bad. I believe I used just a little bit over two rolls of PLA Plus for this. It has a 10% gyroid infill, and then the handle and the hilt have a 15%, just to give it a little bit more strength. Now, you could print this at absolutely 100% infill. 
I can't even imagine how much that would end up weighing or how much material that would end up costing. Feel free to slice that yourself, but the possibilities are endless. But if you're making this out of plastic, you want it to be as light and cost effective as possible. So all in all, this cost me roughly about $30, $35 to make, and that's awesome. I have a buster sword now. That pretty much does it for this build review, guys. If you watched all my other tutorials, PLA fusing, PLA welding and sanding, you'll know how to make this. It's really as simple as printing out the parts, fusing them together, painting it, and calling it a day. It looks a lot more overbearing than it really is, and it really that wasn't that hard of a project. I actually had everything printed in about two days. However, it just took me a lot more time to kind of fuse it, get it you know, how I wanted it, and start building it up. I will note the only problems I really had were actually the gaps when I was actually going to fuse the parts together. I had a little bit of lifting on some of the prints, so the nice smooth flat surfaces didn't really meet up too well, so I had to do a lot of welding and filling to get them nice and smooth. But I was actually able to utilize all the leftover raft material I used to print the tall parts and melt that right into the blade itself. You can actually still see some of the raft material left over on this failed part, and when you're printing, when I'm printing something tall like this, I'll always use a raft just to kind of give it a little bit more stability. But what's also nice about this, you can print these pretty quickly as long as you orient them in the X axis so your nozzle does more of the work instead of your bed. Like I said, I'm not done with this thing. I'm putting a little bit of my own twist on it because that's the fun part about making props. You can do whatever you want with it. I could have painted this hot pink if I wanted to. Might not have looked as cool, but hey, it would have gotten people's attention. So I am decorating this a little bit in the way that I want to, a little bit more ornate. I am gonna weather and damage it because let's be honest, the Buster Sword gets beat, pretty beat up. It's even rusted in Advent Children's. So I wanna make sure this thing looks used and it's gonna be sitting on my wall. And if I ever wanna take it down, I can actually you know, walk around with it, hold it, bring it to a convention. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns about this, you wanna know how I did this particular thing. Right now, this is just an elastic strap wrapped around it because I'm not painting the handle. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna get some red leather for it. But, you know, drop a comment, message me on Instagram. I am going to be doing a second video a little bit later once this is 100% done and ready to be mounted on the wall. Don't forget to catch my live stream every Sundays on my YouTube channel. I typically stream around 8 p.m. BST London time. So try to tune in. We can talk about this. I can actually reveal this and post about this now. So I'm really excited. I wanted to get this out there while, you know, Final Fantasy VII Remake is still in the media because it's an awesome game and this is an awesome weapon. So I'm very proud of this thing. If you guys haven't already, if you could subscribe, that'd be cool. Um, I really want to start doing more and more giveaways, maybe some Final Fantasy weapons or just not everything Marvel all the time because, you know, there's other things out there I want to explore. And stay tuned for the future for a full build tutorial on how to actually make a full-size replica Keyblade. And if you're any type of Kingdom, Kingdom Hearts fan, this probably has you geeking out just a little bit. Thank you guys for everything. I really appreciate you watching. I hope you learned something in this video and maybe now you have the, you know, guts to actually go and make something this big, even on one of your smaller 3D printers. So again, if you want to talk more, drop a comment, message me on Instagram, but all in all, have a good day.